what's going on guys it's the devil zero and today we're here um for an amazing spider-man character tier list and today i got a guest on uh guest to introduce yourself hello my name is fuji or rose uh that's what my friends call me i really like spider-man so that's why i wanted to do this cool 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 so i'm gonna have uh rose or yuchi's um link in the description down below so go check out his channel when you're done with this video all right so we're gonna begin this tier list um i guess we can go in order um but if i find anything like really specific i want to talk about we can just go from there is that cool with you yeah i'm fine with that okay so starting off we have madam web um how familiar familiar are you with madam web Madam, what is she from Spider Verse? I remember her name from Spider Verse. Um, she is not from like the movie. Um, she was in like the comic, like the, the comic. comic. Yes. Okay. So there's two Madam Webs. This is the original one. Uh, the original one was in the. Have you seen the '90s show? The '90s show. Yeah. I started the '90s show, but like when I was a kid, but I never finished it. I don't think I ever finished her. Okay, yeah, so she she's like dead right now in the comics. So you prob and she's been dead for I think like since the nineties, honestly, so you probably haven't seen her much. No. I, I, I remember her name popping up in uh, one of the spider verses, but I don't remember her doing anything. Yeah, there's there's a second one right now, that's the one that you probably are familiar with she's she looks a little bit different this one has like a blindfold on um i believe she's blind and she like sits in a chair that's like for life support um and she's a psychic i think she was introduced in the 70s the 70s okay yeah so she's like an off-brand dr x is what i'm getting essentially yes um all right yeah the most important comic she was in with Spider-Man was um, Nothing Could Stop the Juggernaut, where uh, Juggernaut is actually trying to, like, kidnap her and send her to, like, I, th I think some other X-Men villain, like, I think his name was, like, Black Tom Cassidy, and All right. uh, that's where Spider-Man, like, ends up fighting the Juggernaut, so. All right. Yeah, I haven't read that one. Where do you think she should go? Well, mainly because I haven't, you know, witnessed her in Spider Verse, the like the first one. The first one is where I first heard her name. I remember her being important, like at one part in your synopsis, if correct, uh, probably like a good C. Okay, yeah. Um, I personally put her in D, but I can go with C for right now. We can just change things later. If uh, all right. If it fits different. Um, next we have the Vulture. This is um Adrian Toomes. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, everyone should know who he, who he <laughs> of is. Of course. Red comic Yeah, even if you've like seen the movies, like you should definitely yeah, exactly. know who he is. I personally have him somewhere between A and S. He's just a cool character for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, he's definitely at least A tier. He's one of Spider Man's first ever villains. I think. His, I think he's his second supervillain. Um, That's wild. Yeah. So, I'd put him in A. Um, I know some people don't like him because he's just like an, an old geezer. But I like the fact that, like, he's this old man in a flight suit. And, like, Spider-Man, in, in contrast, Spider-Man's just like a, a young, like, wisecracking guy who has to face him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And plus, he's in a vulture suit. That's just cool. Yeah, exactly. I cool about it. It is. It just is. I mean... Yeah, and, like, some version of them have, like, feathers that can, like, shoot razor blades. That That's, like, in the video games, I think, like, Web of Shadows. Yeah. Or, like, the PS4 game. Those are, like, really cool versions of the Vulture. Um, yeah, the, ver the Vulture, like, in all the adaptations, he's just cool. Yeah. Uh, next, um, we have Alistair Smythe. Uh, he's also called the Ultimate Spider Slayer. Uh, how familiar are you with him? I have never heard his name before. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's another one where if you 
He's from the comics too, but like if you watch the '90s show, you would definitely know about him. He was like the henchman of the kingpin in that show. And oh, I see. Yeah, um, he really just makes a bunch of robots, uh, pretty much the uh, spider slayers, and then he becomes one himself. Uh, the most important thing about him is he killed J. Jonah Jameson's wife. I think in, in like it's pretty recent too. Um, so Dang. yeah and he's like a legacy character as well his father who's also on the list he um he was the original like inventor of the spider slayers but he died so like he took on and blamed spider-man so personally i did like the spider-man kill him no um why is it, he spider-man then I think it was because like the all the robots he was creating like had some chemical in it and like the chemical ended up like killing him eventually. Oh, I see. yeah. So like he blamed Spider Man for like driving his dad insane or or like something like that. Um, I swear that's one of the worst reasons I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, I personally, I put him in like D tier. He's like outside of yeah, he definitely sounds like a D tier. Yeah, outside of like his cool design, sometimes like he he's just like nothing. Um. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't. I just don't understand his character at all. Like, uh, anything. Yeah. So next up on the list, we have Aunt May. Uh, yeah, at, <laughs> easy S tier. Have uh, you seen her in the movies? In the I movies? mean, <laughs> Homecoming. I mean, Aunt May. Like for I real. Mean, I mean, easy S. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and even like even the Ultimate Universe, they like aged her down. Like where she still has white hair, but she looks like. A woman in like her like forties and like fifties maybe, so you know, you know like it's like over time they just say hey like let's not make Aunt May like super old and decrepit super anymore. Old again. Yeah, like <laughs> Aunt May's just like a cool character, and she's like, oh, I want I don't want to say a mentor for uh, Spider Man. She's just someone there to support him, and she does that role so well. Absolutely, she's just pretty much just Peter's mom. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and she's always got like really good wisdom and it's, I mean, she's, she's just the best, one of the best, um, stories she's Mom's in. Mom's yeah. Somewhere. Absolutely. She's like one of the best, like par- parental like characters in comics. Of course. Yeah. So, um, next we have uncle Ben. <laughs> uh, God, do we even have to discuss this one? Like <laughs> anyone who doesn't put him in S tier is like insane. They ease. They, they they have a mental disability. I'm yeah, telling. that's like doing a Batman tier list and not putting Bruce Wayne's parents like an S tier. Like, they, oh my god, like, they're just <laughs> too important to each character. That's what I'm saying. Like, like uh, in almost every single, well, most of the important ones. In almost every single important one, Sp- uh, Spider Man brings up what Uncle Ben said. Yes. So I mean, he he has he has tons of weight. In the, in the Spider-Man universe. Yeah, and, and you see, like, nowadays online, there's a lot of debate about, like, Uncle Ben in the MCU, where, like, he's never mentioned by name. I, except for, if you watched the What If show, that's the first time they... That, yeah. yeah um, this, is a, this is a minor spoiler. It's not too serious, but Spider-Man yeah, shows up. Yeah, I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, Spider-Man shows up, and he... um. He mentions Uncle Ben, and that's the first time in the MCU they actually mention Uncle Ben by name. That's crazy, but I feel like the since it's the MCU and Homecoming wasn't really a Spider-Man like origin type thing. I feel like unless Peter said, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, th- then I feel like there's no major reason to mention Uncle Ben. Yeah, like he's he's Peter's greatest failure and like his life lesson like he the reason why he's spider-man is because he carries that guilt with him exactly yeah so um (laughs) so small i can't see that oh you can't um okay let me see can i see i can see oh no no no. it's not it's not that that small it's just like his face okay yeah It's, it's behind the mask thing right yeah it's yeah he's wearing a mask um Oh. This is the Jackal. Um, this is the, oh, that's who that is. This is the second version of the Jackal. 
Um, I'm just going to put him in garbage here already. Um, <laughs> uh, I was going to be generous and say F, but I mean, yeah, garbage is fine. Um, this is, um, oh boy. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know about like the second version of the Jackal, Dan Slott, this second most recent writer, Spider-Man, he wrote on him for like 10 years. He did a story called The Clone Conspiracy where this new version of the Jackal shows up and starts bringing back like pretty much everyone from Peter's life who died ex except for Uncle Ben. Um, so like Gwen Stacy, uh, different versions of like the Green Goblin. Um, I think at the time the Rhino was thought to be dead or, or someone was thought to be dead and uh, they were like really important. Uh, but he brought them all back to like kind of lead peter into like joining him and we find out that it's ben riley and uh, this is like the this is character assassination to a t because and i'm not even a big ben riley fan right like i didn't grow up in the 90s reading ben riley comics but i i always like did kind of like him and thought of him as like peter's brother but yeah exactly yeah you and like the story behind it too is just so dumb like the original jackal like clones and kills ben like 27 times i think and it drives him insane so he just decides to become the jackal himself and it's just like you when he died in the 90s like he died like a good death like he sacrificed himself for peter and he was a good spider-man as well from what i hear from fans and I know he's he, coming. He was yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, and he's he coming back. Yeah, he's coming back as Spider-Man, like Let's in the go. comics. He's like, yeah. Um, Let's go. I'm I'm pretty excited for that, but I I think this is just like really bad characterization. So I gotta put like this version of Ben in um in garbage tier. That's respectable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up is Betty Brant. Uh, how familiar with Betty Brant? I remember the name, but I don't remember her doing anything like significant. But I feel like I've only read like a story with her like one time. So, yeah, she's Peter's first girlfriend, and that's uh, why she's un unsignificant. That makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah, and she's also you know like Jonah's secretary for a, a long time. I think now she's just a reporter at the Bugle. But for the longest time, she was just, like, his secretary and, like, Peter's first girlfriend. And back in this, like, early Spider-Man, like, the first, like, 20 issues. Oh, I see, I see. Well, I I remember her, like, being Jonah's secretary. And the fact that she doesn't really do anything, just, like, I mean, I don't want to... She's not an F-tier character, though. I don't no, she's like not. E or C. Yeah. Because at least she has some significance, but, like... That's just her role. She doesn't do anything with her role, if you know what I mean. Yeah, they they tried doing different things. Like, um, eventually she marries a guy named Ned Leeds, who, I mean, you might know that name from the new movies, but he's a different character in the, in the books. Um, and she also uh, dated Flash Thompson. They did a really weird story where she had an affair with Peter, like, while she was married. And that was, ah, that was weird, but, like, why yeah why, I, I i don't know they P peter sometimes we'll get to peter in a moment but like peter sometimes in the comics is kind of a jerk and it's it's like yeah yeah I really know. weird it's very weird but i've never heard that before that's just he didn't have to do that at all yeah so he right now DM from yeah the, we'll put it in c now <laughs> the roller coaster is that his name big wheel <laughs> <laughs> big wheel oh, oh. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm playing big wheel in s tier for the meme alone <laughs> jackson wheel is a scientist who he got screwed over by um some a character named rocket racer and he just decided to build a big ass wheel and use it to try to kill him in spider-man bro, bro bro make it make him have his own role like above above s tier make him have his own role above s -tier. he needs it. he deserves it he's the best character in spider-man history Better than Spider Man yes. himself. We should absolutely, do. absolutely. Big wheel. There we go. Amazing, amazing. Beautiful. Yes. You love to see it. 
Absolutely, man. Like, <sighs> he just deserves it. Like, every does. he does is just, yeah. it's just um, I mean, it's <laughs> breathtaking. I mean, like, the fact that he just really made that is just astounding. Um, on God. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is that Black Cat? Yeah, next is Black Cat. God damn. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Goodness. I don't even care about her character. For badness alone, she goes at S, yes. Uh, oh, God. Uh, for character? Well, like, her character isn't even that bad, either. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. Like, she's pretty cool. Um, she... Man, if you asked me, like, five years ago where to rank her, though, I'd probably put her in B tier. Because, like, Dan Slott... I, uh, I could go on a rant about Dan Slott, but I won't. Um, but, like, he really ruined her character for a couple years. Like, um, yeah. he turned her into, like, a, a cold-blooded murderer, essentially. Um, Damn. Yeah, like, you know, like, she was kind of, like, more like Catwoman, where she, like, leans the line between hero and villain, but no, like, after, like, Superior well, Spider-Man... Right now, I'm pretty sure she's fully good, right? Yeah, now. yeah, she's she's good again, which is, you know, good, because... She'll, she'll, be, she'll be bad in, like, three years. Yeah. I mean, like I, mean I mean, she's already bad, but that's another point. <laughs> <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Yeah. You're like, Catwoman, besides everything Don Slott did, everything else, she's just really good. Like, she's not, uh, she's obviously not top tier, but her in the adaptations, like, the game, I really liked her in the game. That one yeah. game, I forgot what it was, uh, the, the one that has the meme of Spider-Man walking and stuff happening around, that game. I liked her in that game. Oh, like, Web of Shadows. Cool. Yeah, Web of Shadows, yeah. Yeah. And she's just overall a good character. Definitely. Uh, next on the list is Boomerang. Boomerang. Yeah. Uh, Fred Myers. Is this, is this, isn't this nigga from DC? I mean... No, you're, <laughs> you're thinking of Captain Boomerang. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Different Boomerangs? Yeah. Um, this, it's funny because I think they're both... I think they're both Australian. Or, like, I think this one used yeah. to be Australian or something. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Fred Myers, um, he's absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm going to put him in A tier because, really? yeah, um, in the current uh, run of Spider-Man, he became Peter's roommate. And, like, Peter knows he's a supervillain, but uh, Fred does not know that Peter's Spider-Man. And it makes for, like, really good comedy because, like, he's just... Boomer's just, like, a dickhead. And, <laughs> <laughs> and like, he'll... He'll just be, like, loud playing Call of Duty, like, all day in Peter's apartment while, like, Mary Jane is over. And, oh like, <laughs> and, like, eat all the food and stuff like that. Yeah, and there's, like, a couple times where, like, he hangs out with Peter as a supervillain. And, like, there's this one moment where they, they like, go to the uh, the bar with no name, which is, like, oh a, it's a bar full of supervillains. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of the best, like, stories in recent years. I haven't, like, caught up with most of the re recent Spider-Man. I've really been just been reading Miles Morales because, you know, Miles Morales is like that, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Actually. Uh, next, um, Carly Cooper. I'm going to put her in C tier. I was, I, I was going to say D, but yeah, she's Really? Fun. Yes. I didn't really like her character at all. You know... <laughs> I'm kind of just like in the middle on her, like I didn't read her like her inter uh, her introduction. Um, I just know her from like Superior Spider-Man and like onwards, I guess. Bro, Superior Spider-Man was so good. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, um, I didn't, I didn't like her at all. Yeah, I know why a lot of Spider-Man fans don't like her, which is that like she came right after One More Day, and she was yeah. Peter's first girlfriend afterwards. So, you know, people are already still mad about splitting up him and Mary Jane. So they just took it out on her. But, well, yeah, because, like, I don't know what they're doing making Peter have other girlfriends. Mary Jane is literally, that's literally her, her whole role. Like, her whole role is to be Peter's girlfriend. But then they make Peter have other girlfriends for no reason. I don't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the whole, oh man it was just like unneeded for me honestly absolutely um actually yeah i agree with you and i'll settle for a d tier uh yeah carnage s bro carnage carnage yeah. s <laughs> carnage s 
Carnage is... Design alone. On oh God. Bro, Carnage's design is it's better. It clears every Bleach design. It clears half the manga design. That <laughs> and it's not even, like, super drippy like that. It's just, like, like, when you see Carnage, it doesn't matter if you have any knowledge on him. You just know he's that nigga. Like, exactly. You know? Like, he literally just rolls up and, like, yo, he's a serial killer. This man means business. Oh God, this bro! Before he even got the fucking the fucking symbiote, he was just that nigga. He was literally a serial killer before he got it. Yeah, and like he writes in blood, Carnage rules. Like, come on, like, like come on, bro. Like, Carnage is one of the best supervillains of all time. This should be common knowledge. And then he got ten times better after Absolute Carnage. I don't know if you've read Absolute Carnage. I read some so, of it, yeah. Freaking good, bro! It's so good. And it just makes Kanye's character like ten times better, bro. It makes Venom's character good too. Like, I can, I, I, I want to rant about how good he is, but I, we don't have time for that. All right, yeah. All right. Next is the chameleon. Um, the chameleon. Fun fact, though, the chameleon is Spider-Man's first ever supervillain. Really? Yeah, he appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number one. That's that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like he's like I don't know how to say this. I'm not laughing because he's bad. I'm just laughing because like the name Mister Ch- like the chameleon, it's just funny to me. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm gonna put him in C tier. Yeah, um, C tier is fine, especially because you know it was like the 1960s. I mean. Don't yeah, have stuff like that. Uh, he's, I mean, he's just like a shape. He's not even a shapeshifter. Like, he just wears different disguises. I mean, he got beat up. <laughs> he got beat up by Mary Jane with a baseball bat, and like one time, Aunt May poisoned him with cookies. Like, come on, he, he, you know you're mid when Aunt May beats that, you. Bro. How do you fall? How do you fall for that? Oh my god. Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> crying. Oh, my God. Yeah, the the best thing about him is that he's Craven's stepbrother, though. Like, <laughs> that's the best oh thing God. about him. Oh, my God. There's no way. Yeah. He's Craven, Craven the Hunter. That's who we're talking about. Yeah, he's his stepbrother. That's, wow. That's a disgrace to Craven's family name. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Anyway. Yeah. So that's Captain, Captain, Captain Spider-Man, Captain Universe Spider-Man? Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. He 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 only appeared in Spider Verse, right? Um, he was in Spider Verse, and he was in a uh, story in the '90s where I think like different. So there's a story in the '90s called like Acts of Vengeance, and mm-hmm. essentially a bunch of different supervillains like Loki, Magneto, Doctor Doom, they all got together and were like, "Hey, like we keep taking on the same superheroes. Why don't we like change who we fight?" Oh god, they should have done yeah. that a long time ago. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like they end up fighting different people. So like Peter's like fighting like this Fantastic Four villain called like Pace Pot Pete. He's fighting Magneto. He's fighting this guy named Graviton. And mm-hmm. eventually he like gets into this accident, like in his college, like this uh science experiment, and he gets the powers of Captain Universe. And he is like overpowered. Like he oh, He god. fought yeah, he fought the Hulk. <laughs> He fought the Hulk in the story, and he punched the Hulk into outer space. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, in Spider-Verse, like, in, you know in Spider-Verse, there's, like, these, the people, the quote-unquote vampires, they have to, like, yeah. the spider, eat the spider and shit. He died fighting them, right? But he went down, like, like that nigga, bro. He, he fought, like, three, ten, four of them at a time, bro. It was, it was so funny. It was not funny, not funny. It was just cool. It was just cool. It was just cool. Yeah, and it's just it's. I'm gonna put him in uh, B tier because it's it's just like a version of Peter, but yeah, it's just a version of Spider Man, but a very very overpowered version. Yeah, and bro, I swear they use like science experiments as an excuse to give niggas random powers, bro. I swear, <laughs> bug bites, like space travel, any, anything he just gives oh, you. God, literally anything. Radiation, go, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, this one's S tier. Uh, Doctor Octopus, and, bro. We, we don't have like. To, like, like oh my god, bro. man! Like, bro, did you see him in the movie trailer, bro? I, oh my gosh, bro. <laughs> I'm so hyped! I'm so hyped for him I'm to come so back. So hyped for that movie, bro. He said two words, and I got so hello, excited. Peter. Like, bro, how do you, like if you, 
if you say two words and I get excited, you know you're just like that, bro. Yeah. Like I can't even say anything more. Yeah, like he's he's in the big three of Spider Man villains, like Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Venom. Like he's he's just that guy, man. Like he's he's so like significant in Peter's like life. And he's he's kinda like a parallel to him where like they're both scientists and they both like I think like Doc Ock had like a really tragic upbringing where like he got like yeah. uh he got like abused by like his dad I think and or no his mom his mom was like really manipulative oh, yeah. but he's he's kind of like a dark parallel to Peter where they're both scientists and like want to do right by the world but you know Otto takes like the dark the path Ock, yeah Ock does it yeah he does a dark path yeah Ock is just cool like his design is we're gonna look, let's be honest his comic book design it's kind of ass. But the the octopus things they're they're cool. I guess. Yeah, he has some cool like different designs. Like, uh, he wears he. I think in the nineties he like wears like a white. He just wears like a white suit, like a white business suit, and he looks so cool. And he's like wearing black shades with it too. The oh, problem the I problem with that. Otto is that he has a bowl cut. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's literally the only problem. If you switch it up sometimes, oh my god. Yeah, bro, Superior Spider Man. That was when Doc Ock was was Spider Man, right? That was it. Yep. Spirit Spider Man. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. He. Oh my god. But yeah. All right. Next, um, Flash Thompson. Flash Thompson. Oh wait, wait. Okay. Before I rank him, are we including like uh, Agent Venom? Yes. Including Agent We're gonna Venom? include everything. Oh, S. S tier. S tier. S. Yeah. Okay. Bro, listen, Flash Thompson, he didn't really play a role like, n- like in the beginning. But once they gave him, like it, he went from a B to an S in Agent in Agent Venom for me. I Which is so good. Yeah, I would say he's honestly he's always been like between A and S tier for me. Um, I mean he's one of the original cast members. Uh, he exactly. He he's grown a lot too. Like very, bro. Yeah. Very. He has one of the best character developments in all the comics. Dude, when, dude, when he died in like um in number eight hundred, I I, oh I legitimately teared up. I was like, Jesus oh man. But like if it was the beginning, you wouldn't care at all. Exactly. Because he was a jerk. Yeah, like, like he's a bully and then like in college, like he matures a little bit and then he goes to war. And then he like he comes back and like he he realizes like his errors and like Peter and then they bury the hatchet like it's just that's really good writing by like Stan Lee man. I'm one. Uh, I don't know if this is like completely like I don't know my my memory's kind of like uh, it's shaky, but I'm pretty sure when Flash died in something I don't remember, I don't remember what it was. I'm pretty sure when Flash died. Peter was at his grave and he was like saying stuff. I don't remember exactly what he said. Either he was saying something or he was crying. It was one of the two. Like it's just his character development is just so crazy. Yeah. I would it's argue not something we see a lot. Yeah, I would argue that um Flash is Peter's best friend and not Harry. Because I mean, we'll get to Harry later on, but like that dude he's different. He, he's different, man. Yeah. <laughs> Harry, I don't know. All right, next, um, garbage tier. This is uh, oh my god, this is Gabriel Stacy. Get, yeah. Get, uh, oh my god, I forgot his uh, like, did he have a super villain name? Or like uh, Gabriel Stacy went by the Gray Goblin, and he went by American the Sun. Gray Goblin, that's what it was. Oh my god, bro. Since <sighs> he's from, okay, so for anyone who doesn't know who Gabriel Stacy is. He is from uh, the storyline called Sins Past, from I think like 2005. One of the worst Spider-Man stories ever. Um, oh they God. so uh, with just a little mini breakdown. Um, it's explained in the in the story that like Norman Osborn slept with Gwen Stacy, and they ended up having kids. Oh. And oh my God. Yep. Uh, actually, you know what? Screw it. Like. Here's Sarah Stacy. I'm putting her in garbage too. Uh, that's his sister. Um, w, w. Good shit. Good shit. Like, it's just so bad. And like, at least actually, you know, I'll put Sarah in F because at least she becomes like a good person 
I, and yeah. but like Gabriel would just he's just like insane and evil, kind of like Norman, but like crazier. Mm-hmm. And actually, speaking of Stacy's, we have George Stacy here, Gwen's father. Um, where do you think George should go? George Stacy, Gwen's father, Gwen Stacy's father. Did he do anything? I just remember him being her father. Yeah, so this is another one where it's like he's really old. Um, he didn't do too much. He was like a, a retired, I guess he wasn't retired. He was like semi retired, like police officer. Um, and like the thing with him was that, like, it was a running thing in the comics where he would talk to Peter and like, and the the way the conversation would go, it almost sounds like he knows Peter Spider Man, but is just like not explicitly like saying it, and that was a really cool thing. Um, yeah. But besides that, he didn't do too much. Uh, he died. As he died in a fight between Spider Man Doc Ock, where uh, he um, sacrificed himself to save a kid from like some rubble. Oh, what a good person. Yeah. And he's he's essentially like a, another father figure to Peter. Uh, I see. Yeah, I'd probably put him in like B tier because he's not yeah, the most he, important, he but good. yeah, uh, he's not the most important, but he's somewhat somewhat likable. Yeah. Now next is Glory Grant. Um, he was the second secretary for Jonah after Betty Brant like uh, left the bugle, yeah. and she was also Peter's. Um, the way she was introduced was that she was Peter's uh, neighbor in, like, the first apartment he moved into. Or, like, the first or second apartment he moved into. I didn't, like, see, bro. I, yeah. Like, I, she didn't do anything. Yeah, she... she I mean, <laughs> she's just there, honestly. Uh, yeah. Goblin, put him put him in front of Emma, bro. Like, don't do, don't do this. Come on. <laughs> All right, so... Goblin. Yeah, we got two goblins here, actually. Um, oh. So, this is the not yeah. goblin, and that's the like yeah so kind of. i have here because actually i was thinking about how to do this because like i had like three i have like harry on here i have and these two goblins so i thought okay this one's like just a deep cut but i'm gonna put like bart hamilton green goblin on here uh bart hamilton is like the third green goblin he he was like a therapist for harry osborne and like Harry, like kind of docks himself as being the Green Goblin to him, and so the guy just thought, "Let me become the Green Goblin real quick." And like, he has no Goblin serum though, so like Peter just beat him up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna put him in like D tier, but uh, right. this Goblin is Norman Osborn, easy S tier. Like, I mean, come on. I mean, he. <laughs> Nah, nah, he's not better than Venom. Let's let's not do that. But he's definitely the second best. I, I would say he's better than Venom. I'd say he's Peter's greatest what? enemy. Yes, I mean uh, he, he's Peter's greatest enemy. But in terms of character, oh, in character too, man. Like, I mean, what are you talking? Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you've read like that the Venom run by like the most recent Venom run. But Venom was he, it was crazy. It was crazy how. Even the symbiote, the symbiote, or however, however you pronounce it, had character development. Like, okay, I see, I didn't know all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to read it to find out for yourself. Like, the symbiote started like it. It cared for Eddie. Like, it didn't want Eddie. To, Eddie was about to die. The symbiote was like he was begging and shit. Like, ah, bro. Like, that Venom run single handedly saved Venom for me. And Venom's just a cool guy before before the whole character development. Yeah, he's just, like cool. And for for me, for, always for me, he was just like when I think of Spider Man villains, I always think of Venom first. Like I, I respect that. I respect that. I think the thing with but me yeah. is that Venom hasn't been like a villain since like the past like long, twenty years. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's the only thing I kind of had in terms of villain. Yeah. Like Osborne's easily the the better one, but yeah, yeah I mean, I, I mean, like, look, like he killed Gwen Stacy, he he like abused Harry and like led P- Harry down that path Harry, of becoming yeah. the Green Goblin. He, he I mean, literally set up Harry so when he died, 
Spider Man would have to deal with Harry. Like, exactly. He was like that. Yeah, he's yeah. he's just like a master manipulator. And oh God. Like I mean, <laughs> I don't know if this story still canon or not because uh, one more day. But like, he even like caused like Mary Jane to like lose her kid. Like, oh my God. he's he's like that savage man. Like he's that nigga. Like honestly, bro, that nigga. This nigga is horrible. He's a horrible person. Yeah. Um, oh my god. <laughs> is that Gwen Stacy? This is Gwen Stacy. Uh I'm not gonna put her in See, I don't S- know where to put her character, bro. I'm gonna put her in A tier. A because oh because um okay, is a character, I'd probably say she's like B tier at most. Yeah, that's what I was gonna put her. But I think her death like itself kind of like ups her. Um, yeah, her, her death had major impact. I mean, yeah, on Peter, of course. So, I mean, oh, quick question, quick question. Yeah, do you have Peter himself on this list. I do. Okay, so can you make like a role before, uh, above everyone else and do b- below Big Wheel, of course, but like above <laughs> everyone else and make it like Peter? Because I mean, we we know we know we know where Peter's gonna be. Of course, yeah. Like I mean. <sighs> I mean, it's Spider Man. Like, we'll, we'll get to Peter once we get to Peter. There we go. I like that. I like, you love to see it. You love to see it. That's yeah. Kingpin. Kingpin, right there. Right. Uh, this is Hammerhead. Um, I have another pic. I have another picture of him. So, like, I'll put it there later. Um, we just so we can just skip over him for a second. But uh, right. next is Harry. Um, <sighs> listen, bro. I I want to say, like, Harry and Peter, for me, are, like, I don't know if you've read Vinland Saga, but, like, they're, like, Prince Canute and Thorfinn for me. I've not read Vinland Saga. You you should, bro. So good. But I have Norman, uh, not Norman, Harry S. Um, shit, this is, okay, this is tough because there's an ongoing story right now that's heavily involved with Harry and really? yeah, the conclusion I went. The conclusion comes out in like two weeks from when I'm recording this. Um, oh damn! I I don't know where to put him because if the execution is good, I'm gonna put him in like S tier. Maybe he might even go in a, a league of his own. But I think right now to play it safe, I'd probably put him in A tier. But like, if you want him in S tier, we can do that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm good with him in A. Just put him in front of um, Harry's roommate. There we go. Oh, or in front of the yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. I'm, I mean, uh, Harry's whole story is really good. Just to, I want to keep this a little quick, but like, I mean, he goes through like drug addiction. He like he loses his dad. Um, he I mean he goes insane. Like, and then like he kind of redeems himself, where like he gets married, he has kids, and like the way. The way his story ends, at least like for a limited time, is really good. If you right. haven't read Spectacular Spider-Man number two hundred, I would highly recommend it. Um, it's I would too. It's probably one of the best like Harry Peter stories, like period. Oh God, talk to him, man. Uh, next is the Hobgoblin. Oh my God, why did they make so many goblins, bro? I don't know, bro. Uh, the Hobgoblin was actually pretty cool because. Uh, he came out like a few years after Norman died, and so for that time we didn't really have a goblin because like Harry, he already did like his Green Goblin thing, and then he like went to rehab. So we had like a new goblin, and th- the whole thing around him was that there's no clue who he is. There was just a big mystery that went on for years about who this guy is, and so we never found out who he is. We did, <laughs> and it's very convoluted. I don't want to know. I will tell you, yeah, I will tell you who it is, but the story itself is very confusing because oh, it hopped, confusing. yeah, it hopped from writer to writer. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, I would cool. safely put him in B tier because his the mystery yeah. itself is cool and like his design and everything is cool. Like in the '90s yeah. show, he was voiced by Mark Hamill, you know, oh. <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, is next, that ice man. This is Hydro Man. Hydro Man. I swear they're the same person. I swear <laughs> to God they are. All right. Um, 
I don't, I don't know what the fuck Hydro Man did. Uh, pretty much nothing, to be honest. <laughs> like, he, he did nothing. Oh my God. Actually, no, I'll put him a D, honestly. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, fun. This one... <laughs> uh, this one is the Hypno Hustler. Oh, uh, my God. Just by that name, I know she does. He... <laughs> I'm going to put him in big wheel tier. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. His whole thing is that he uses music to hypnotize people, hypnotize people, and like rob banks and stuff. So, oh like, <laughs> like <laughs> that alone just puts him in like big wheel tier. It's just ridiculous. Of course, of course. And he's like an '80s character, and he still looks like an '80s character. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Nice. Ne- <laughs> Next is the Jackal, the original version. Uh, the original Jackal. I put him in F tier. <laughs> All right, he's terrible. Like his whole th- okay, his whole thing is that. Let's take away the Clone Saga, right? I know a lot of people don't like the Clone Saga. That's like its whole mess. But yeah, he his whole thing was that he was um Peter and Gwen's college professor. They're like mm-hmm. they're, I think they're, like their science professor, and he had a crush on Gwen. And, like, when Gwen died, he blamed... A lot of people blame Spider-Man because he was there. And, like, I mean, whether you want to say it or not, Peter killed her because of the, the whole, like, web thing is yeah, one is thing. one thing. But he blamed Spider-Man for that. And he ended up, like, making a clone of Gwen to, like, haunt Spider-Man. I, I, Bro, what? I can't even remember... Yeah, and I can't even remember if he figured out that Peter was Spider-Man at the time. Because, like, he makes a clone of Spider-Man. That's how Ben Riley is created, but... It's just weird. Like he's just a creepy, like old guy, and like a it, he doesn't even look like a jackal. He looks like a like a gremlin. Like, oh god! <laughs> yeah. and he doesn't have any powers either. So, so he's, he's just a random old guy in a suit that's obsessed with Gwen Stacy. Is what I'm getting. Yeah. Okay. The best thing about him though, the best thing about him though is that he created the Punisher. Or not created. He, um, he hired the Punisher, and that was the Punisher's like first appearance. So you can oh. thank him for the Punisher. Oh yeah, yeah. He he deserves F tier then. I was about to say drag him down to garbage, but simply because of that Punisher, put him in, put him in F. All right, yeah. Next, no debate here. No debate here. I mean, like, come on, bro. Like, come on. I mean, it's literally, it's J. Jonah Jameson. I mean, do we need do we need an explanation for this? I mean, no, we <laughs> can just keep going. Like, <laughs> I think anybody know who knows Jonah knows he he goes in S tier. Right. You don't even need to know Spider Man. You know this guy. Of I course, mean, he's everywhere. Like J.K. Simmons alone. Oh God, easily but easily the best Spider Man villain. But that's you're the first person I've ever heard say that. But that's kind of true. It is true. Like he's he's if hating was a job, J. Jonah Jameson would be the richest person in, in the world. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I, I like his character arc right now where he's kind of, uh, he's actually kind of like an ally for Spider-Man now. Like he, he kind of changed his ways, but it's, it was oh done god, really good. Character development? Oh my god. Yes. He has character development. <laughs> Jay, Jonah's, Jonah's done it all. I mean, he's a hero. He's, he's, he's a villain. He has character development. He, I mean, he's done it all. Yeah. All right, next is the Human Torch. The Human Torch. We're doing this off everything, and not just everything based Spider-Man, right? Huh. I, uh, yeah, we can do that, because I, I don't think a lot of people know too much about his stories of Peter. So, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. I would put him in, like, a good A or A. Or, yeah, A is fine. A or B. He's okay. just really, really cool. Like, he's just so cool that he deserves A. Like, yeah. His power is just really, really cool. Yeah, and um, him and Peter are like best friends too. Uh, yeah, I think they. It's actually interesting because I don't think a lot of people know this, but they had a lot of team ups back in like the original like Stanley Steve Ditko run. Like they would always like meet up, whether like they're in the civilian identities or like as heroes, and like. They would either like get along with each other and like kind of be like a brotherly spat, or like they would just fight each other because they're so annoyed with each other. And I'm telling you, go go yeah. Libra. I'm telling you exactly. Like, like 
the Human Torch is with him. Like, wait, oh, oh I'm pretty sure. It, like, there's this run where Spider-Man actually joins the Fantastic Four. Yes, it's when Johnny dies and like yeah. Peter, Peter takes his place because Johnny wants that. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, I actually read that and I was like, wow, that's man, that's just good. Oh God, that's what I'm telling you. Like, if they just did it for some random reason and just wanted Spider-Man in there, it wouldn't have felt good. But since they used Johnny, it just felt it's like it, it felt like, oh yeah, he, he he should be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, next is the Juggernaut. Um, I put him on here because just of one story alone, that's the nothing can stop the Juggernaut story. Yeah. It's I mean it's one of the best Spider-Man stories. Period. Uh, yeah. Uh, I. Uh, I haven't read that one, but if, like, you can put him in B, I'm fine with that. Yeah. But there was just, like, one Juggernaut run. Like, it was a standalone ju- Juggernaut run. And this Juggernaut, like, he got this power, and he just, he changed somehow. Like, I, he just, he went from someone who just destroys shit in the X-Men villain, right? X-Men? Yeah. Yeah. To, like, someone who just, he, he was a hero, basically. And it was just cool. But I, I don't know much of, like about the Juggernaut, so yeah, B's fine. Yeah, uh, just for the story alone, because I don't know too much about him either. I'm not. I like the X Men, but like I'm, I'm not too much of a reader on them. Yeah, facts. All right, next is Kane. Uh, that's Spider Man's other clone. Do you know too much about Kane? No, I only know about um the other Scarlet. That's the what's his name again? Uh, ben Riley. Is no. Yeah, Ben Riley. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put Kane and B uh, for like badass factor alone. He goes in B tier. Uh, he has this power called the Mark of Kane. Uh, Spider Man also has it, but he doesn't really use it because he's like a good character or a good person, I should <laughs> say. But it's where um, like everyone knows Peter can like stick the walls, so Kane can do the same thing. But Kane like. <laughs> He can like use the his sticking ability and like he'll put his hand on someone's face and like oh God. he can like bur- sometimes he can burn them sometimes like he can like tear like their face off and it's just like I mean, yeah it sounds really really cool but I haven't seen that I haven't seen him been executed yet so. yeah he also killed Doctor Octopus at one point oh yeah he like straight up broke his back. <laughs> B tier is deserved. <laughs> <B-tier's> deserved. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. <sighs> Next up is Kindred. Kindred is like the newest Spider-Man villain um, from the yeah. current run. Um, <sighs> Do you know anything about Kindred? I don't really like him. Really? Uh, I maybe it's because I I enjoyed the original Spider-Man villains. But for some reason, I don't know. He It's not like he felt out of place. I just felt like he wasn't a good matchup with Spider-Man for some reason. I, I actually agree with you. I haven't read most of it. Okay, yeah, I agree with you. Um, because personally, I don't like magic in like my Spider-Man stories. Exactly. Uh, like I like it science-based or like really grounded. And like you introduce this character who can resurrect people, who can like enter people's dreams and stuff like that like it's it's getting a little Spider-Man out there cool but they just don't fit in a spider-man story. exactly um and with the i do you know who kindred is like their identity uh no i don't think i'm that far yet okay i won't spoil it for you but that's a huge thing right now and that's uh, it's explained who it is I'm not gonna tell anybody who it is, but it's very convoluted and it's very confusing. Um, I'm gonna put him in C tier for right now. Uh, once the story, like, once the story ends, I might put him higher. I might put him lower. So I'm just gonna put him in like the middle for right now. All right. Next is Craven the Hunter. Craven the goat, the goat himself. Um. I really like Craven, but I don't think he's over Harry. Okay, we can put him in B tier. No, but if he's in B tier, he has to be like he's high B, hello A, because he has to be the high, the highest in B tier if he's in B tier. Okay, yeah. Uh, Craven's last hunt. I mean, I mean, he straight up, 
<laughs> he sh shoots Spider Man and buries him alive. That's like, like <sighs> I don't. <laughs> He's definitely one of the most badass Spider Spider Man. Villains. Yeah, he doesn't even have any powers. Like he's just a hunter. Yeah, he's just he's just that guy. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's just that guy. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's a story in like the uh, late '60s where, uh, you know, like he he wears like that lion's mane like on his chest. Yeah. The eyes of <laughs> the eyes of the lion shoot lasers, and like oh the way God. they're placed. The way they're placed, it looks like he has nipple lasers. <laughs> oh my god. They're coming up with anything, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, next up is Liz Allen. Uh, <laughs> she got boobies, but nothing else. I yeah, mean, I mean, that's I mean, true. I mean, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I'm putting her in C tier. Uh, yeah, she's fine. Actually, I put her above Betty, right? Um, oh, well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. She okay. She was a love interest for Peter, and when he was in high school, but like they never dated. And yeah, that's that's why she she's over. Yeah, uh, for me. Yeah, like, I, like it's cool that she's a love interest and they never dated because Spider Man, as I stated before, does not need to date anyone else besides Mary Jane. Yeah, and she, right now she's Harry's wife, so that's that's really like all yeah, she does uh, now. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, good for him, man. And her brother is actually. Let's do her brother right now. Her brother is um the molten man, the, uh, the molten goat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I like the molten man. He wasn't anything special, of course, but he was cool. Yeah, I'll put him. I'll put him like. I'll put him above chameleon. Yeah, yeah, easily above chameleon. Yeah, but, but chameleon's a bum. How do you lose to Aunt May? <laughs> I still can't get over that. Poison cookies. <laughs> but, like, bro, how do you fall for that? I like, don't know, bro. How are you a Spider-Man villain and you lose to cookies? And cookies from Aunt May, bro. Like, Hey, but she knows how to make wheat cakes. So she Fact. she knows she knows something, though. Fact. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, okay. That's, um, that's Mary Jane, right? Yes. Top of S tier. <laughs> Top of S tier. Uh, bro, I love Mary Jane. She's easily S tier. She's better than Aunt May, but is she really over the Goblin? Yes. Is she really gonna do yes. that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. Um, Listen. Her, okay. Mary Jane is amazing and all, but like, come on, man. The Goblin is the, like. All right. Let me hear your point. Let me hear. Let me hear you. Mary Jane is probably one of the most well developed female characters I've like ever read. Facts, facts, she, facts, facts. So she starts out as like this I don't want to say ditzy, but like kinda like she starts off as a party girl who like doesn't take anything seriously. Like a basic white girl basically. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she doesn't she's like not really too serious into Peter. Like they go on dates and stuff, but she doesn't want to be committed or anything. And mm -hmm. Like, we find out, like, that's just all a mask because of, like, all the, the like, tough things she went through in, like, her childhood. And yeah. she she's a lot like Peter, where Peter wears a mask to, like, fight his guilt and to, you know, bear responsibility. She wears a mask to, like, protect herself, essentially. Yeah. And, they're I mean, they're pretty much soulmates. I mean... <laughs> Uh, that, well, that's exactly why I didn't like the other females on the list. They f felt so unneeded. Yeah. Um, and she, I think, what is it? Man, I think the best part about this is we know from the hop that she knew Peter was Spider-Man. Like the day Uncle Ben died. Yeah. She found out that he was Spider-Man. So when you go, like that, man. yeah, you. Like, when you go back and like read everything and you like see it through that lens, like whenever she makes an excuse, like whenever she makes an excuse or like says something to Peter, like you read it through the lens, like, oh, she knows he's Spider-Man. That's why she's saying this or that's why like she's acting like this. It's, it's like really cool. And that's why like you go back and you read like, oh, that's why she's not really wanting to be committed to him because like she knows like he can go out any day and like die to a super die, villain he, yeah exactly yeah <sighs> okay yeah i'm fine with that i'm fine with that ranking yeah 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 
He's just, I love the Goblin so much. I, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm fine. We could just say they're equals. Like, you can just put it that way. Yeah, yeah, they're basically equals, yeah, for me, yeah. All right, next is Spider-Girl. This is, um... This is another universe where uh, yeah. Peter and Mary Jane, like, had a daughter. Um, oh, so this is that universe? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was a, the universe where Peter was a girl. No. Uh, okay. I'm going to put her in B tier. I haven't read yeah. too many of her comics, but I do like her. I like the fact that, like, I I always like the stories where, like, you know, the your main superhero, like, has, like, a kid and, like. Ties to other shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ties to, like, yeah. It said Borto. We don't talk about Borto, but yeah, yeah, we don't talk about. Yeah, but like yeah. Batman, for example, he is Damian Wayne, and like the dynamic of him so like cool. raising him oh exactly. Like Spider Girl is basically Baruto done a lot better. Like, yeah, like, that's what we're gonna say. Definitely. And Damian Wayne is Baruto times like one million. So. Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, next is Mendel oh, Strom. Before we do this one, before we do this one, okay. back to Mary Jane. Yeah, I'm so glad that they didn't give her like spider powers or anything. I'm so glad it would have ruined her character. Oh yeah, definitely. I like the fact that she's she's just normal. Like yeah, exactly. I mean, for like like I said before, she beat up Chameleon with a baseball bat. Exactly. She, like like <laughs> yeah, like she's defeated Electro by herself. I mean, she's she's really capable. On oh God, bro. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, this is Mental Strom. Uh, he's also called like the Robot Master. Uh, essentially, he was like the business partner of Norman Osborn, and like I Norman know. ended up screwing him over and like threw him. In, he somehow like he got into jail or whatever because Norman framed him, and so he came back and like started making robots and shit to like oh my be God. a villain. And, like, eventually he turned himself into a robot because, like, he, he keeps, like, dying and coming back as a robot, essentially. So uh, he can basically just, like, make infinite robots and come back infinite times. Pretty much. Like, he just uploads his consciousness to the internet. Kind of like Ultron. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, it's that's cool, but, like, his reason for being evil is so stupid. Yeah. Like, I get Norman, like... Like fucked you over, but like, come on, man. Yeah, he's just going in in, in D. Um, yeah. Next is Mephisto. Ooh, bro, I kind of like Mephisto. He kind of nice with it. Okay. Okay. Mephisto, I want to put him in F so bad because of one more day. Big wheels here, man. Come on. Big wheel. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, I need to hear why big wheel. Because, bro, Mephisto is a dope name, bro. If they made his character good, bro, like, he would have been so cool. But, like, besides besides his name, he's kind of ass. But still, his name his name's cool. That's simply why he's there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we can, nah, nah, we'll put him back in garbage. Put him yeah, back. we'll put him in garbage. <laughs> One more day makes him garbage. Like, he took away Peter and Mary Jane's marriage. So, you know, yeah, like, I'm still bitter. All right, next. Miles Goats. Yes, Miles sir. Goats. Yes, sir. Put him in. Put him in Peter Parker. Put him in. Peter, Peter Parker. Parker. Yeah, and once we get to Peter Parker, we'll put we'll put Peter Parker above him. But yeah, put him in Peter Parker. Now, so I want to hear your case for Miles because I haven't read too many of his books. All right, Miles. How do I say this? So you know when someone else is Batman. Yeah. And it's just not the same, and mm -hmm. you know how. When there's di diversity, you know how stuff like, especially comics, they try to force diversity. Yeah. Miles is diversity done so right. He's, he, like, he's, he got stuck with two of the worst tropes in comics and he came out one of the best characters of all time. He's a replacement for another, another superhero, another popular superhero, for, to be exact. And he's meant to be, you know, a diversity kind of character for comics. He does both of those so freaking well. Like him, it doesn't even feel like he. It feels like he's a whole nother superhero. It doesn't feel like he's Spider Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is I'm pretty sure. I don't think it, it's ongoing. I don't know if it's if his comics are ongoing, but that run, especially I really like the one with Spider Gwen, even though it was like a romance thing. That one, that one was pretty cool. But 
Miles is just like that one guy said it perfect. He, he has the exaggerated swagger of a black team. I mean, <laughs> he's just. And then plus his suit is awesome. His mom is really cool, and also he's a one of these probably the. I don't want to say the best because I feel like I'm forgetting someone, but definitely one of the best black superheroes of all time. Yeah, I think he's up there with Black Panther. Easily. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I knew I was forgetting someone. Yeah, he's definitely up there with Black Panther. Yeah, I... I can't wait to see a live action of Miles, bro. Oh, of, my, oh my gosh. That's going to be amazing. I'm I mean, a live action Spider-Verse, bro. Oh bro, Spider-Verse alone, just, that's my favorite Spider-Man film. And, like... Yeah, it's mine, too. Bro, yeah. Miles, ah, in the game, like, his own game, too? Like... Oh, yeah, and he got his own game, and oh, my God, that game... I, 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 did, I didn't play it, but I saw other people play it. It's phenomenal, like... Oh that's God. that's really what turned me around about him was the game and, and the movie. I really like I I always liked Miles. I liked him because like, you know, his, his character was just really cool in the comics and stuff. But once he got like if, if I didn't read most of the comics, he would be like S. Like low S for me. But like just because I did read them, he's definitely up there with Peter Parker. Alright. Uh next we have Morbius, the living vampire. This is the guy that started Spider Verse, right? No, that's um, I think that's Morlin. He's I Morlin, think, all right. Yeah, actually, we can do Morlin right now because he's right next to Morbius. So yeah, uh, Morlin, as a villain, he's like, I want to say, I'm tempted to say, hey, low key. Really, I did. You're the first person I ever heard say Morlin is a good villain. It's not it's because his, like. His presence, his like weight in the in Spider Verse is just enormous. Like when I was reading Spider Verse, I was scared for for the spiders because of this nigga. Like it, it doesn't like to me. It didn't matter if he was good or not. His presence alone makes him A or B. I respect that because when I read his like the first ever appearance of him, he definitely was terrifying because he's just like a brick wall that you really it's. Almost impossible to be that Spider Man alone can't get through. He can't, exactly. he can't get through alone. Exactly. Like that's what a villain needs to do, in my opinion. Have that presence and make it great. Like, how do I say this? When you when you're reading Spider Verse or like anything that he's in, you even when he's not on like on paper, you know that he's he's coming soon. Like it's, it's it's just like he's just like that. Definitely, that's my reason for him being good. I don't care about anything else to be real. Yeah, I'll put him at the like the bottom A tier. Uh, I'll give like my thoughts on Morlin really quick. Um, yeah, my problem with him is that it's a it's another case of like magic and Spider Man. Like him, yeah, yeah. He started like that whole like totem thing where like Spider Man wasn't like a science experiment gone wrong, but he's like magic like he was destined to happen and stuff like that it's just that kind of turns me off on spider-man but when it, i do agree with you when it comes to like the presence alone he's terrifying um yeah exactly so i i can i can give up being like an a tier personally though i would put him probably like c tier c tier yeah that's, i'm fine with that yeah we get, like besides his presence yeah he's he's, he's kind of ass i'm gonna lie he's kind of ass but like yeah. All right. So, um, Morbius, um, I'll probably put him in like C tier. Like, I'll I'll put him above. I'll put him above Glory. Um, he's essentially like another science experiment gone wrong. He gets bitten by like a bat or something like that, and becomes a vampire. Oh my God. Uh, he's. I mean, he's fine. Like, there hasn't been too much done with him. Like. I know he's getting a movie. I don't know what's going on with that. That's just weird to me. But well, aside from that, like he just goes, he's just mid. Like that's all I can say about him. Yeah, like the fact that I only know him for his brother is kind of sad. But like, or not, not his brother, but uh, they're brothers, right? Uh, Morbius. Yeah, Morbius and him. No, they're not brothers. They're not okay. Mm, they remind me so much of each other, but yeah, the fact that I only know 
his name for another person it already tells you what I think about. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, next is Mr. Negative. Uh, have you played the Spider-Man uh, video game with a minute? Yeah, yes, I, I have. I have, and I watched someone else. Bro, Mr. Negative, for me, he's just cool. Like, he's just a cool person to me. His his power is cool, and as a villain, he's, he's fine. I mean, you know, they made him into a video game, but, I mean, he was pretty, he was just cool for me. Yeah, I put him in B tier. I like the fact that he's, he's a really cool villain, too. I agree, like, they, and they did him really well in the video game. Um, on God, on God, they did. Yeah, I like the fact that like he's he's got the split personality thing, kind of like Two Face from Batman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like he's a really when he's like Martin Lee, he's just a really good guy. Like he has his um his feast shelter for like new, citizens in New York, and then like, when he comes Mission Negative, he just snaps and he's just like this monstrous villain. Uh, it's just really cool. I feel like they were going for the Two Face thing. Uh, obviously they weren't trying to like copy like because it's like he's they're completely different. Yeah. But I feel like they were trying to go for that split personality thing. And I think they did it really well with Mr. Negative. Yeah. Um next is the mud man, mud thing. Oh I put god. him in garbage. Oh my god. Oh my god, put him in garbage, please. Do you, do you know who Mud Man is? No, just by the name put him in garbage. Okay. Who, uh, who the fuck names themselves Mud Man? Like all right. <laughs> This is one of like, the like dumbest spider-man stories ever in the 70s essentially just a, a quick tldr um stan man and hydro man were like fighting spider-man and they ended up colliding and they fused together into mud man oh my god just which is why <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god and he doesn't even think he's just like a, a mindless being that walks around yeah, from from that picture, I can I I, I thought of that. Like, <laughs> that's oh my god, that's horrifying. Yeah, what were uh, they thinking? I I don't know. Honestly, don't know. Next is uh, Mysterio Goat, Mysterio Goat, Mysterio Goat. That's what I call him, of course. Mysterio Goat. Uh, yeah, we put we put him Mysterio like eight tier. I put him above eight tier. Who would you put him above? Uh, okay, leave him there. Hold on. The, Peter's roommate is a little too high for my liking. Okay. I feel like he should be above Morbius. Or, that's the name, right? Morbius? Uh, Moreland. Moreland, yeah. I get their names confused. But yeah. And Mysterio should be above Johnny. Okay. I respect that. Or above Gwen Stacy. You can you can decide. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll put him in between. Um, Mysterio is so cool. Like, he's just a special effects guy, and he's able to fight Spider-Man. Like, he's just so cool. Like, and and I, what was it? It was Far From Home, right? Yeah. That was when he was the villain? Yep. And then, like, he leaked Spider-Man's identity. That was just cool. I mean, no other villain, like, tried to do that. I mean, except, like, Osborn. But, like, he didn't really succeed at all. But, like, yeah. Mysterio is just really cool. It's design is also like it's odd but once you get used to it it's really it's really nice honestly. yeah he just has like giant fish bowl like on his head and it's like it's so corny but it, it works really well it's so, cor- it's so corny but like once you get used to it and you see it more and more it just says it just gets so cool yeah next is ned leeds um i have never heard of this man ned leeds <laughs> He he's also a guy who worked at the Bugle. Um, he married Betty Brant, and um, I, oh man, he's he gets involved in the Hobgoblin storyline. That's all I'll say about that. But um, he his most I guess, I don't know. Uh, his most famous thing is that he died. Like and he didn't even die like in the in the um like normal Spider Man book. Uh he died in some what was it called? Uh, Spider Man versus Wolverine. It was like a mini <laughs> Yeah, it was like a it was like a graphic novel. Like he died in that. And then like later on in the Amazing Spider Man, they like open up the next issue and it's like, Oh well, yeah, Ned Lee's is dead. Moving on. 
Like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. How do you get forgotten like that? That's tough. It is, it's, it's dirty. It's... <laughs> ooh, ooh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Does the Hobgoblin storyline take place after George Stacy dies? Yes, it takes place after George and Gwen die. Okay, so is the Hobgoblin George Stacy? No. All right. I, I, I was I was I was looking at George Stacy and I was looking at the Hobgoblin. I was like, they they, they just look like <laughs> the same person. But yeah. Uh, who is that? This one? Oh, that's a prowler. This is the prowler. Okay. Um this is the original prowler. It's not um it's not Aaron Davis. Oh, is, yeah. Yeah. Uh I mean without Aaron Davis, the prowler's gonna uh, I'm gonna lie. Yeah, um he's I'll probably put him in like C I'll put him in C tier, I'll put him above him probably molten man. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's like a I mean, he started out as a villain for like one issue. And then, like, he... Because he was, like, a misunderstood villain. Like, he was, like, uh... He was a black guy who, like, got screwed over constantly. And he just said, fuck it, let me become a villain. And then, like... <laughs> and then Spider-Man, like... Instead of, like, arresting him, like, took him in and, like... Was, like, gave him a second chance, essentially. Like, he understood that, like, he was just doing this because, like, he was just getting screwed over. So, like, he becomes an ally of Spider-Man, like, later on. Oh, that's nice. I mean, yeah. a lot better than him. I mean, Aaron Davis still is still way better. Oh, no, of but course. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine with C. Definitely over fucking Bud Man shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, next is Randy Robertson. This is um Robbie Robertson's um son. I know who Robbie, uh, the, his dad is, but I have no idea who he is. Uh, Randy, so when did he show up? He showed up when Peter was in college, um, and he wasn't too much of a character then, but, like, later on, they, they did some interesting stuff with him, but, uh, the best thing about him was that, um, there was a point in time when, um, Peter and Mary Jane were married, and MJ was in, like, a plane crash, and it was believed that she died. Um, so, like, Peter was, like, Peter was in that zone, you know? Like, he was just depressed. Yeah. And, like, Randy took him in, and they became roommates. So, that's, that's like, his best story, uh, honestly. Uh, simply for that, he's obviously over some people on this list. <laughs> Mud man. But, <laughs> he, like, he's just a cool person. He's, like, a good person, honestly. I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine with where, where, wherever. As long as he's not, like, in BTM. I put him top of C. Hold on, hold on. Madam Web is a little too high. I ain't gonna lie. She's a little too high for my liking. I agree. I think I don't think he's I don't think she's above any of these characters. Um Yeah, honestly. I'll put him between Ned Leeds and Chameleon. Anyone below the chameleon I feel so bad for. Like, how are you below like <laughs> Oh my god, I still can't get over And the chameleon just has oh cloud. <laughs> That's what he has. Yeah, he has cloud. That's simply why he's there. Uh, next is the rhino. Okay. I might, like, this might be an unpopular. He's S for me. I agree. I look, you agree. Kiss it, kiss it, kiss it. Because the rhino, the fact that he just destroys things and he's dressed like a rhino is just so freaking cool. Like, yeah. I, like, it doesn't really matter what his motive. It never really mattered what his motive was for me because he could be like a like he could have like who has a really bad like the 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 guy that Norman screwed over. He can have that like that type of backstory, and I would not care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Rhino's just so freaking cool, bro. Like definitely, uh, just like looks alone and all that. He's really cool. Um, the other thing is that like, he has a really good character too. Um, over like and it's actually pretty recent like his character development for because he really was just like a villain for the most of the time but like in the 2000s they like gave him like a really sympathetic story where like we found out like he has a wife and he like really cares about her and um he there's like a story where he actually fights like another rhino and he's just like trying to protect her um 
And there's like times where, especially now, where like him and Spider Man like either team up or like Peter shows a lot of sympathy towards Rhino, and it's it's pretty cool. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. E- yeah, he's easily S now. Easily. Yeah. Okay. Oh, next. Oh, oh. Did Jonah Jameson is a little too low for my liking. I'm not gonna lie. He's a little too low. Okay, I agree. Um, I'm not putting him. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna that's, that's I'm gonna switch these two, but I'm not putting him above like these. Like put Carnage I, above um, put Carnage above uh, Black Cat. Okay. Actually, we gotta put Doc Ock above Black Cat too. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but. Uh, should we put Flash Thompson above Black Cat? Uh, I don't know, though, because, like, you know, Flash Thompson's a guy, though, so, I mean, I don't know. We'll leave it like that. We'll come back to that later. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is, what's his name? Richard Fisk, a.k.a. The Rose. He's the son of the Kingpin. and Well, see, now I have bias because he has Rose in his name, so obviously I have bias now. Okay. <laughs> that what I'm playing. <laughs> the son of the kingpin sounds like such a cool like nickname. I don't know why it just sounds cool. I have no idea like what he's done, but I'll put him in like somewhere C. Yeah, I, uh, I put him, I put him like next to Kindred. Um, All right. He, I won't say too much about him because he's he's not too big, but he. He became like a rival to his dad, so that's that's like cool. That's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, next is Robbie. Um, Robbie Robertson. Oh wait, hold on. Let me let me do something real quick. All right. All right, I'm back. My bad. Okay, cool. Uh, next we have Robbie. Um, this is the uh, other guy's dad, right? Yeah, this is Randy's dad. Um, yeah. Pretty much Jonah's, Jonah's like second in command at the bugle. My I'm job is kind of cool. Not yeah, I'm gonna but... put him in like A tier. A. Whoa, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. From what I remember, he's like B. I don't know about A. Okay. Here's the thing, man. Um, let me get, let me list off a couple of things. He's like the one guy at the bugle who can keep Jonah in check, and Jonah does, never gets mad at him. Or, well, he gets mad at him, but like Jonah listens to Robbie. Um, which I mean, <laughs> to be able to rein in Jonah is like a feat in its own. That is, that is a, that is a big, big, big achievement. Um, but, he he also low key knows Peter Spider Man, but never tells ooh. anyone. Boom. All right. Uh, yeah, it's fine then. Uh, what's the other thing? Um, also, he has beef with Tombstone. Um, Tombstone. So he's a regular person that has beef with a supervillain. Yes. Uh, Tombstone, oh who's pretty much made out of rock, essentially. He, him and Robbie used to be buddies. And then, like, Tombstone turned to crime. And Robbie tried to stop him. And, like... That's how, like, Tombstone became a supervillain. And ever since then, like, he... They have, like... They literally have a family feud. Like, even Tombstone's daughter is, like, in on it. And, and stuff. And, and uh, Robbie's son are, are in on it, too. It's it's pretty cool. But we can that, keep him at, like... Cool. We can keep him, like, at the, either at the top of B or, or low A. All right, yeah, yeah. Because he's... I don't know. Because I don't... I just don't feel like he's over Craven. From what I've seen. Okay. But he's definitely I, very cool. We can definitely put him, like... I put him above Mr. Negative. Yeah, yeah, easily above Mr. Negative, but like, yeah. All right, next is the Rocket Racer. <laughs> I'm gonna put him next to the Big Wheel. Easily, Big... easily. Come I mean, on. it's literally a guy with like a super powered skateboard. Skateboard. Oh my god. Come like, on, bro. <laughs> bro. He's like that. He and he's literally why Big Wheel exists. So he, I mean, come on, he has to go next yeah, to him. Exactly, he has to be up there. I mean. Like he created the big wheel. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Um, next is the Sandman. Sand goat. 
saying go put some respect on his name. Where would we put Sam yeah? Um I don't know. I feel like okay. Somewhere when, where Harry is. Either in front of Harry or behind Harry. Okay. I agree. Um I de- he definitely goes in at least in the eighth tier. Like his powers are really cool. Like sometimes I th- when I when I think about Sandman sometimes I think he doesn't fit as a Spider-Man villain because of just how overpowered he is. Like, if you take this man to a beach or an island, like, who's going to stop him? That's what I'm saying. Like, ah, like, I don't know. They, like, he's he's more like, I don't, Sandman or Goku, who you got, Devil's Day, though? Who you got? I mean, he ain't being Goku, though. Yeah, that's true, that's true. But yeah, he's just, he's overpowered and his demeanor is just cool. Yeah. Like, uh, what was the movie? Was it was Spider Man 3? Original Spider Man or Amazing Spider Man? Spider Man 3? That was it? Yeah, that's where he showed I th- Yeah, that's where he showed up in, I think. Yeah, yeah. That movie, when. I'm pretty sure he, like, escapes from prison. Mm hmm. And then him, him and T- P- Peter just box the whole movie. It's just cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a fun fact about Sandman is that he was once an Avenger. Really? Yes. He turned oh to God. good. He yeah, he actually flip flops between good and bad a lot. And at one point, I think in like the 80s or 90s, he became an Avenger. That's so cool. Uh, All right. uh, next is a Scorpion. Scorpion, Scorpion. Um, Scorpion really never like stood out to me. He, for me, he was just always just like another villain, You, if you know what I mean. Yeah. His appearance, his, his appearance, his, wow. His appearances, appearances were very cool, though. And his, like, uh, his design is fine. Like, it's not that bad. Yeah, I like his design. Uh, his character is, like, whatever. The best thing about his character is that, like, um, he was the first supervillain that Jonah created to, like, kill... Jonah says he didn't want to kill Spider Man, but like he wanted to kill Spider Man. Like, yeah. yeah. But like, he's the first villain that like, Jonah created, and like that's always like a thing to throw in his face is that like he made this villain uh, and like unleashed chaos like in New York. Yeah. Uh, who's that? This is Screwball. I'm putting her in F. Screwball? Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm fine with that. She's got, I mean, I'm not even gonna bother to explain Screwball. She's garbage. Um, uh, <laughs> well, okay, she's above Mud Man because at least she's funny sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the next is a shocker. I mean, everyone's above Mud Man. Shocker? Yeah. Shock? Shocker? All right. Yep. Shocker. Um, his power is cool, but he's like an off brand electro to me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I like his costume. Like, I like how hokey it is. Like, he, he's wearing essentially a quilt. Yeah, exactly. His costume is really cool. But, like, for me, he's always just been an off-brand electro, bro. All right, so... Hmm, I'm putting him... I'm above Scorpion. Above Scorpion. All right, yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, next is Silver. Can you, mm-hmm. can you hear my relative just came over? Cause it's my sister's birthday. Can you hear that? Oh yeah, I can. I can hear a little bit. All right, hold on. I'm gonna try and put my headphones on. It. I'll. Uh, if my phone starts to die, then well, shit. All right, next person. Silver Sable. Sable, Sable, Sable. Oh my God, Sable Ghost. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, it's not, oh, it's not the, oh, damn. Never mind. I thought it'd be like Deadpool Sable, but never mind. Oh, wait, no, that's Cable, right? Yeah, that's Cable. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know who this bitch is, yeah. Uh, she's, she's a mercenary. Well, she, it's weird. Okay, she's like kind of a mercenary, but like she also like has a country where like she's, I think she's in the royal family or, like, an important figure in, like, her country. And she, like, goes around and, like, takes out, like, whoever, like, she wants, I guess. Um, and she has her own mercenary group called the Wild Pack. 
and like she like nowadays she's more of a partner to spider-man but eh, they have like an on and off like uh partnership all right yeah what is he in the um miles morales movie or was it the the first one not movie not movie game she was in the first game yeah the, yeah, yeah. yeah spider-man uh, ps4 Right. Uh, next is Silvermane. I'm putting him. Uh, I'll put him in like either bottom of C or top of D, to be real. Yeah, I'm putting him in uh, Silvermane. For those who don't know, is a mob boss, um, kind of like the Kingpin. He was actually introduced, I think, after the Kingpin, um, in a story where like he wanted this tablet that could reverse your age and make him younger because Silverman's an old man. And yeah, he's old man, yeah. He when he uses the tablet, he actually turns into a baby. And wild. Yeah. Eventually he I forgot how, like science mojo, whatever, he like gets back to his old age and then like he almost dies and he becomes a cyborg. So now he's like this old mob boss who's a cyborg and sometimes like He's just like a head. He's just like a baby thing, Loki. Imagine a super villain baby, bro. That would have been so cool. That would have been cool. Uh, they actually did that a little bit in the '90s show, where like he came back as a baby, and like his daughter was like, was like holding him, and he's like lecturing like his henchmen, like, oh and he's like, oh, I need to, that. I need to change my diaper, and it's just like, what? <laughs> oh my god, that would be so cool. I need, I need to watch that '90s show. Yeah, uh, next is the Sin Eater. The Sin Eater. I swear I've heard this name before. Uh, he actually just came back in the comics. Uh, Kindred resurrected him. Huh. I don't know where to put him. I don't remember much of him. He, so he used to be a police officer, and then he's, a li he's, uh, he's, obviously deranged uh, he has no powers he's just a guy in a ski mask with a shotgun and oh, well he his most important story was he killed um this police captain her name is Jean DeWolf she worked with Spider-Man for a couple of years and uh mm -hmm. like it actually caused Spider-Man to like he almost like kills him and like oh damn yeah like and like Daredevil has to like stop him uh it's that's probably the most important story he's in. Um, he's he's all right. Like I, I think I'll keep him. I'll put him above Silverman because like the story he's in is better. But he's True. fine. Like it was it was Silver it was Silverman. If they just stuck to that baby thing, bro, he would have been my favorite villain of all time. Not gonna lie. He yeah, he might be a big wheel tier. On God, bro, but <laughs> he has to be down there because they didn't go that route. Next is Al, um, not Alistair, uh, Spencer Smythe. I'm gonna put him next to his son. Yeah. Um, I mean, do we really have to explain this one? Yeah. I mean, he just makes robots, and he died from his, he died from the chemicals of his own robots. So. Yeah. I mean, that's that. Like, how do you do that? How many people do you have left? Uh, actually, we're close to the end. All right. All right. S. All right. See, come on, <laughs> like S. Come on now. Spider Man 2099. S, S. Where's he? Bro, what? Where? Where in S is he going? He's either he's below Flash Thompson to be real, but you can debate whether he's better than Rhino. Uh, just to play it safe, I'll put him right here. Yeah, that's fine. The All right. Ninety nine, like for twenty nine ninety nine, the costume amazing. Like it, it's top tier. It's a top tier Spider Man costume. Absolutely, uh, just just the web cape alone is just alone, awesome. Alone, I'm telling you. And then the fact that it's a futuristic Spider-Man is just really, really cool. Like it's an idea that I'm not sure if Batman Beyond happened before, but it's just an idea that's so cool, and they executed it really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like his power set is a little different too. Like he has claws, and uh, I think he has poison too. So, yeah, 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 it's poison, yeah. Alright, next is the Spider Slayers. I'm gonna put them next to them really Good. quick. Good jits. Mid, man, I'm telling you. Alright, Hammerhead. We'll get a couple of these out of the way. Where do you put Hammerhead? 
Oh my god, look at that nigga's head! Oh my god! Um, anyway. Uh, yes, he's fine. He's... Uh, I don't know what they put him over Silvermane. The baby thing keeps him alone. Actually, man, if we had, like, the ghost of Hammerhead, I'd put him in big wheelchair. For real, but... Yeah, I mean, like, the baby thing with Silvermane just puts him over. Yeah. Alright, uh... This one is Tarantula. I'm putting him in D. He's just like a... He's like a South American version of Captain America, but he's evil. <laughs> like... I will sleep, bro. Yeah, he's so fine. Like, bro, wait, bro. And his, like, power is really dumb. He has, like, a needle in his foot. And, like, he stabs you with it and it knocks you out. Like, he, he's silly. He's oh super God. silly. Alright, this was the Gibbon. Um, I'm putting the Gibbon at the top of A tier. Or actually, I'll put him above Harry, uh, below Harry. Um, Wait, who is that? The Gibbon. The Gibbon is like this. Yeah. He's like this kind of like primate guy. Um, but like, if it was just like his story in like the I don't know the seventies, he'd probably be like D tier. But they did like a really tragic backstory for him. Um, I think the past like three years. And it completely like changed my view on him. I, so I, I think he right. definitely has to go to eight tier. Uh, Actually, can really carry a character. Oh my god! I, I definitely, dude. Like, uh, swarm. I'm putting him in big wheel tier. Oh god, bro! I was about to say, if you don't. Oh my god, swarm <laughs> is just that guy. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, swarm. Uh, for people who don't know, is. Uh, he is a Nazi scientist who was who is made out of bees. Yeah, bro. Like you can't tell me that isn't cool. Bro. It's some of the craziest shit I've ever heard of. Uh, like a Nazi scientist who's also made out of bees. Like, come on, amazing. Uh, Superior Spider-Man. Where are we putting him? S S S. S? I'm Peter Parker, real quick. Peter Parker. Like, <laughs> Bro, the Superior Spider-Man is arguably one of the best Spider-Man runs of all time, and I'm pushing that narrative until I die. I definitely agree. It's it's really good. Um, just like the the idea of Otto being Spider-Man, like just like what he does, and the, you know, but the thing is, like you know, Peter's yeah. coming back, right? But you're just yeah, thinking yeah. to in your mind, like how much damage. Is Otto gonna do to, to this guy's life? To Peter's life, exactly. Like, and it's funny because Otto's, everyone knows Otto isn't the best Spider Man villain, but it's great that they chose him and not like Eddie Thompson or Carnage or Norman Osborn. You know what I mean? Definitely, I feel yeah. Like Otto was the perfect choice. Yeah, and like he. And he doesn't even do a completely bad things. Like, he creates Parker Industries, which, yeah, I mean... Parker Industries was one of the best ideas ever. Like, it was just so cool. Yeah, like, making Peter rich for once is, is just, like, a really... I, it's such an obvious thing, but, like, it was well executed. On oh God, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, for set, like for comics, it doesn't really matter of the idea as long as it's really it's executed good. And I feel like Superior, Superior Spider Man is that like it's it's just that it's something that's not too complex, but it's executed to greatness. Yeah. Um. Just a quick one is the Syndicate. Uh, this is essentially like a. I'm gonna put them at the top of C tier. They're essentially like an all female version of the Sinister Six, where you have the Beetle, who's actually like Tombstone's daughter, you have Lady Octopus, Scorpia, um, the second Electro. Uh, I'm forgetting a I'm forgetting like a couple of them, but uh they're fine. Like uh, they're pretty they're actually pretty funny. Um, but that's all. Like I I just for enjoyment factor I put them at the top of C tier. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, Kingpin. Kingpin. A. A or B somewhere. Top of the King. The Gibbon. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Awesome Spider-Man villain. Awesome Daredevil villain. 
the the, like, the, the Netflix version. So cool. Like whew. the Netflix. Oh my god, the Netflix version of the King Ben. That's a whole different monster. Like yes. Oh no. And the fact that like he's a fat, he's a fat like gang like he's a fat like Don basically. The funny thing is like he's not even like fat in the way you think of fat. Like he's. I think he says like he's all muscle, like that. Like it looks like fat, but he's all muscle. Yeah, he's all muscle. That's why like Spider Man, like when Spider Man boxes him, it's not like a quick, a quick match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just it's, Cape Prince is cool. Like uh, next is the lizard. The lizard as a character is really good. Like he's he's very cool. His like the scientist portion, like that he turned into a lizard. He was discovering like animal like genetics and stuff that was really cool but like besides that he's uh he's he's eh. okay yeah uh hmm. i i think i'll put him next to mr negative because they're very similar characters yeah they where like they good. have they have like a good side to them and then they have an evil side to them and uh really- yeah, I don't, I want to say Mr. Energy, Mr. Negative did that better, but it really just depends on what you like, honestly. Yeah. Uh, who's next? I think. Hold on. Let me see. Ah, oh, I think I have to refresh this. There we go. Uh, next, we have uh, Teresa Parker. This is Peter Parker's sister. He gets a sister? He sure does. <laughs> he has a long lost sister who is a spy. Um, from that idea, it doesn't really sound, unless it was executed well, it sounds like a C tier idea to me. Yeah, she's pretty. A lot of people debate on whether or not like she's a good character just because he has a sister, which I don't. I actually don't mind him having a sister. Um, yeah, I feel like that's a cool idea. It's just like it's just never really needed for him to have siblings for me. But mm-hmm. if she's done well, then I mean, yeah, and I mean it's pretty it's pretty polarizing whether or not she's done well. I personally, I personally think she's just fine. I mean, we could put her in like, uh. Yeah, I'll put her at the top of C. I'll, I'll probably get a lot of Spider-Man fans mad at me, but uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, Venom. <laughs> I know where he's going. Stop Peter Parker, bro. Stop playing. Stop playing. Peter Parker. He's literally, in every adaptation, he's the best Spider-Man villain of all time. There's no debate. I mean, I, I, I'll debate you on that, but... <laughs> like, bro, listen, because, like, Venom... In like not even in his own run. Let's not even talk about those because he's he, he clears every villain. But in every Spider-Man run that he's in, he he him and Peter like they contrast well. And every fight is hype. Like when Venom's on the page, you know something's gonna go go down. Yeah, and the fact that like I think he's like the first like villain. Or, like, first big villain that teams up with Spider-Man. Because, like, I mean, yeah, when is. Carnage is introduced, like, like no, like, we can't take him on alone. We have to team up. Yeah. And the fact that uh, Venom is also responsible for another amazing villain, Carnage, is also, a, like, wow. Like, True. Yeah. And, like, the symbiote, the symbiote idea is awesome as well. So. Yeah, because, like, the, the symbiote has, like, his own backstory and, like, its own, like, lore now, I think, right? Yeah, it does. Like, bro, there was a whole comic run where they went to the planet where the symbiotes were. Like, the Guardians of the Galaxy and Venom went there. It was the funnest comic book run I've ever seen in my life. All right, well, there we go. Like, I... Here we go. This was obvious. Everyone knows where he's going. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> literally Peter Park. Come on, man. I mean, he's the, he's literally responsible for everyone on this list. Yes, the uh, I'm gonna argue this greatest comic book character of all time. Uh, 
probably my f- top three favorite characters in all of fiction. Like, I mean, I, you, you, I agree, what is there to yeah, say? But, uh, he's not my favorite comic book like character. My favorite comic book character is probably Doctor Doom. You know, that's a very unpopular. But I, I respect that. Doctor Doom is hype. Doctor Doom is the best villain in fiction. Actually, tied with Joker. Tied with Joker because Joker. Joker's like that, but yeah, he's tied with Joker for me. But Spider-Man is definitely top three, top three favorite, easily. Yeah. In fiction. I mean, he's he's literally in the big three with Batman and Superman, like it, it's like, popular characters. Like, he's just built different, and it's it's funny because when you're like when I was like thinking back on Peter Parker, like I was like, well, he does he's like the same in every and I. I almost slapped myself. He's not the same in every comic. He's, he's, he, he, oh my God. I could go on for hours talking about Peter Parker, bro. Yeah. I mean, he's, it was just, he's, he's the king of the list. I mean, like he's, he's not a big wheel tier, but I mean, he's, yeah, he's yeah. beyond that. All right. Why are, we, why are we even joking? We all know Big Wheeler is the best character in fiction. Oh, of course, man. He beats Goku. Like, he just rolls over Goku. Like, <laughs> like Goku literally quivers in the sight of Big Big Wheeler. Like, <laughs> is that another Mysterio? Uh, yeah, these are just, like, extras. Oh, I, I, I. Yeah, I had, like, extra pictures of them. So, okay, and, uh, hey. Let me look at this list. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm really proud of myself with this list, honestly. Yeah, I think it's pretty solid. Like, I think some of these are going to be hot takes. Like, I, I definitely expect people to be mad at me about Moreland being an A tier, but I don't yeah, mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but overall, I think this is pretty good. Um, yeah. Why? So I don't know why, but like. I can't decide who's better, Carnage or Jonah. Because mm. I don't know. I just can't decide. I'm gonna go with Jonah. Uh yeah, just because yeah. Jonah's been around longer and has been like consistently good. You know? That's true. That's true. Yeah, alright, yeah, I agree with you. On like that. he's been around since like number I think like number one. And he's always been like the same that not even like the same guy, but like he's been He's always had that same energy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Him in front of Carnage is fine. I don't know because like for the for Carnage, I always put him in the same boat as Venom. But then I remember like he's not he's not Venom's level ever. He's n- not ever gonna be Venom's level. Yeah. Oh my God! I just remember King and Black. King and Black easily puts Venom like King and Black alone puts Venom in Peter Parker. Like it's oh my God. You, have you read King of Black? I have not. Oh my god, bro! It's the it's one of the hypest things Marvel has put out in years. You need to read it. It's it's definitely on my list. I know, like it's about um, Noel, right? Like the God of Symbiotes yeah, coming. King, yeah. Oh my god, bro! No, it's so. Oh my god, bro. He's like, how do I how do I put this for someone who has it? Like, he's like Carnage mixed with Doctor Doom mixed with uh mixed with venom basically that's literally him and then mixed with the badassery of your yeah of the character that you think is most badass that's no yeah you okay that's that's a high way of putting it I'm, I'm not gonna lie yeah i know it's high but once you read it you'll understand and bro no has been mentioned like long ago and like they just did it it's, his build up was amazing bro I'm telling you you need to read it alright I, yeah I'll make sure it's like on my reading list I I think you got Marvel Unlimited so hmm? yeah have you read Death Metal Death that's DC right yeah that's DC no I know is he is he like um the Batman who laughs the Batman alright listen listen this might be a hot take hot take the Batman who laughs is a top five villain in fiction. Easily. It's not even close. I would debate he's top three almost. Honestly. Wow. That, he, he's, he's Venom tier? 
Uh, he's below Ben. <laughs> he's wait, hold on. He's number four, number four. Because I have Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom, and Joker can be you know interchanged. Then I have Venom. Then I have the Batman who left. Okay. That's like, bro. Once you read it, it's just he's a whole nother monster. I'm telling you. Yeah, I I heard good things about it, and I definitely need to like catch up on DC. I haven't read DC since like I don't know since like the New Fifty Two ended. So like I don't know, like six years ago. Damn. Yeah, yeah, you need to. Like, how do I say this? The ba- imagine like Doctor like Superior Spider Man, but like done ten times better. That's the Batman who laughs. Oh wow! Okay, that's. That's high praise. Um, I'm telling you, bro. If you don't like it, you can block me and never talk to me again. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's that good. All right. Uh, so this is our list. Um, I'll put the list in the comments down below the description. Uh, yeah, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh how about you like talk about your channel a little bit and tell people uh, where you can well, find on you? My channel, I talk about uh, you know stuff I like to talk about, mainly manga and anime. But now that I've done this tier list, I might talk about comics to be for real with you. But um, well, I, yeah, I do a lot of stuff, and yeah, I mean you can come check it out if you want shit. But subscribe to Devil's Arrow. This nigga, he is a cool ass nigga. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, that's all for me, uh, everyone. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. Of course.